Philip Krall. Do you know him yet? If you don't, you're gonna know him after this video. Hello everyone, welcome back to another Marley's Monday. And if you don't know who I'm already, my name is Nick Bard and I make YouTube videos on the Toronto Maple Leafs. I cover the Toronto Marlies for the Leafs Nation and today we're diving into Philip Krall, what the Toronto Maple Leafs have in him and where he could end up whether that be with the Marlies or if you could ever make it to the Toronto Maple Leafs. If you do enjoy the video, make sure to leave a like as always. Hit the subscription button as well if you really enjoyed it. Again, thank you so much for a thousand subscribers. We're going only up from here. So if you do again enjoy it, please make sure to leave a like, subscribe, and comment down below what you think of these Marley's videos and whether or not you enjoy them. Before we do start though, I just want to say with Crawl in this video, I'm not going to be talking about how close he may be or how long it will take for him to get to the NHL because he only played 10 games with the Toronto Marley's last season and we really don't know much about him at the AHL level. So I'm going to wait a little bit before I do make a video on him on that. I'm just going to talk now about what the Toronto Maple Leafs, the organization, and the Toronto Marlies have in this player. So, back to Philip Krall for a second. In April of 2020, the Leafs signed him and Christians Rubens to three-year entry-level deals, which Krall now has two years left on that contract. He's a 21-year-old, six-foot-one defenseman from Blansko, Czech Republic. The Leafs got him in the 2018 draft in the fifth round, 149th overall. If we want to go all the way back to final season in the WHO with the Spokane Chiefs, he had 12 goals, 37 assists for 49 points in 53 games. And for a defenseman in the Western Hockey League, that's not bad. After that and after the pandemic, he went on loan to the Czech Republic where he had 31 points in 55 games played. And then he came over to the Toronto Marlies where he had two goals in 10 games. So by looking at his stats, you can obviously tell already that he is an offensive defenseman or at least he has the offensive mind of a defenseman. What I've noticed from watching him with the Marlies, watching some of his highlights in the WHL and in Czech Republic, is that he's not afraid to join the rush. He actually enjoys it a lot. He is not afraid as well to be in the offensive zone, very low, sometimes even behind the net and getting the puck. He's essentially like a fourth forward for the team. If you wanted to relate him to an NHL player with the Leafs, the first one that comes to mind is Morgan Riley. He may not be as good as Morgan Riley, but he has that offensive mind and he's a similar player to him. One of the other things that I've noticed a lot, especially with the Marlies, is he's not afraid to shoot the puck. He has a very deceptive shot at the blue line and he's very good at just being able to get that shot off. He's very good at walking defenders at the blue line. So say he's at the blue line and there's a forward coming up to him with the puck. He's able to just get around him or shift his body or do something just to be able to not let him have the puck and then either get a pass off or get a shot off. And when it gets a shot off, he usually sometimes scores. We saw that last season with the Marlies. Both of his goals in the AHL were both from the point. Both are again deceptive shots where you shoot it and it just somehow beats the goaltender. Literally at some points the goaltender has nobody in front of him and Crawl still beats him with a shot from the point. That's how good and deceptive his shot can be. And like I said in the WHL he spent a lot of time in the offensive zone really taking control of what he can do with the puck. He's very good at shielding it. He's very good at his shot, even if it's not from the point. This guy can really shoot the puck. He's also good at seeing the ice, knowing when to get the puck up, knowing where to get the puck while he's in the offensive zone, and just really, he has a lot of offensive abilities that you'd love in a defenseman, especially at the AHL level. I'll be honest with you, he came over to the Marlies last season, and I, I really didn't know much about him. I didn't know what kind of defenseman he was, and then you see what he can do with the puck, how quickly he can get his systems locked in, how quickly he just really transformed his game at the AHL level. There's a lot of excitement in terms of watching Philip Crawl next season in Toronto. Also, Crawl is a very good skater. He's also very fast with and without the puck. If he wants to go up the ice with the puck, he's going up the ice with the puck. Nobody's stopping him. And if he needs to get back, he will be able to get back because he has that speed that is really just able to allow him to get back to the zone when he needs to. But I do have one thing that he's got to work on, and that isn't a skill, although there might be some points where he does lack some of the defensive skill in their own zone. There is one thing, 
one thing. Only one thing. L literally only one thing. The main thing though is his weight and likely his muscle. Like I said earlier, there's a lot of things that he could do better, especially in the defensive zone and being strong on the puck. Because you're in the AHL at this point, you're in the pro league, there's a lot of guys we saw with Nick Robertson who are a lot stronger and can just really get the puck off you so easily. So I think if Crawl, who's at 176 pounds right now, at six foot one, a defenseman, that's not really ideal for what he wants to do and where he might want to go with his hockey career. I think with him adding muscle and getting stronger, he'll be stronger on the puck. He'll be stronger without the puck. He'll be stronger in every aspect of his game, and that'll just transform him into being such a better player. Now, if we want to look at comparables at the NHL level for Leafs, who are defensemen who are around the same size. You look at Morgan Riley, six foot one, 219 pounds. That's 43 pounds heavier than Philip Crawl. We look at TJ Brody, six foot one, 185 pounds, nine pounds heavier. That's that's not really a lot, but it, it's still something. You look at Travis Dermott, who's shorter at six foot, and he's 205 pounds. That is 29 pounds heavier. So what? that's the only thing I'd like to see from Crawl is to add some weight, add some muscle, because if he wants to be able to get to that NHL level, he's got to be able to be physical on and off the puck. He's got to be strong with the puck and without it, and he's just got to be able to to hold his ground and sometimes clear people that in front of the net and at 176 pounds if he's sitting there with a 200 210 pound guy it's going to be so much harder to get that player out from in front of the net and plus the thing you got to look at is he wants to be harder to play against and i think adding that muscle adding that factor in and just being a grittier player being a little bit meaner being a little bit bigger it's going to make him a lot more difficult to play against and one where if he wants to have the success in the offensive zone he'll be able to and then when he has to come back and play defense he will also have that success too but he's still only 21 so he does have some time i mean if you want to look at another comparable we could look at rasmus sandin who's younger and he's bigger rasmus sandin i think prior to last season put a lot of muscle on and now look where he is he's getting a chance at the nhl level and obviously they're not the same type of players. Crawl isn't as good as Rasmus Sandin. I'm just going to say that right out flat. Um, but there is a lot of benefits to becoming a stronger player. And if Crawl can do that, he'll be able to show what he can do at the AHL level and then possibly down the road get a shot at the NHL with the Toronto Maple Leafs or another team. But really, we're going to have to wait and see because I could sit here and say, oh, he's 176 pounds right now. He's got to add muscle. And then come a next month when the Marlies are in training camp, he's added 10 or 20 pounds. I, I don't know if 20 pounds is possible to add muscle. I'm not really going and I'm not really informed about how you can build muscle, but I'm just saying if he's put on a lot of muscle, you're going to look at him having a breakout season next year in the AHL. His first really season in the AHL actually. But if you're looking for how long it may be before he does get to the NHL, I, I don't got an answer for you yet. We're gonna have to wait and see what he does with the Toronto Marlies first. I may put out a video mid-season if everyone would like that about what my thoughts are on him then and where I think he could go. But for now, we're just gonna talk about what he has, what his ability is, and what he can do better before really looking that far ahead. Last thing though I do want to say is let me know what you think of Philip Crawl in the comment section down below. He's a very interesting player. To me, it's always exciting to see prospects like him dominate in the WHL or the OHL or any of those junior leagues and then come up to the AHL and it's really exciting to see how good they can be and how much they can transform their game into becoming a pro player. And that's what excites me the most about Philip Crawl is just this next season and seeing what he can do next. That is though where I'm going to end off the video. If you did enjoy the video, please make sure to leave a like. It helps a lot. Let's hit probably, let's say 50 likes on this video for Philip Crawl. If we can do that, that'll be great. If you really enjoyed the video as well, please hit the subscription button. It means a lot. It helps a lot in terms of me creating content in the future. And leave a comment down below of what you think again about Philip Crawl, but also what you think I should do for 1,000 subscribers. Let me know in the comment section down below. Thank you so much for watching. Go Leafs go. We got a month and a half until training camp for the Leafs. And a month and a half or a little bit less until all or nothing. I'm not ready. Hope you are though. We'll see you in the next video.